Ooh, welcome back to the BDG Fantasy Football YouTube channel. We did the wide receiver rankings this morning, so if you missed that, go check it out. We will be turning the page to the running backs for week four, and we'll be going 12 by 12 through our top 40 running backs for you guys. This is based on half PPR rankings. You will see Adams. You will see Andrew's rankings. We'll see the biggest discrepancies and talk about the dudes who have the widest gaps. Course. All right? Course. But... Anybody out there, regardless, running back, wide receiver, quarterback, can go grab the free square of Patrick Mahomes half a passing yard for Thursday night football, all right? Underdog, they just want you on the platform. They are giving you an absolutely free bet. All he's got to do is throw for one single yard if you sign up on their app with our code BDGE. So you will get a deposit bonus all the way up to $1,000. Depends on you know how much you end up putting on the platform. Stacks. But you'll also get the free square on there of Patrick Mahomes, and you will get our Big Dog membership for you for the full year, both free, just for depositing on Underdog Fantasy. All right, so go check out the app. Go check out the website. Link down below. Let's go check out the top 12 running backs for this week. We've got Saquon at one, Brees at two, Bijan at three, Derrick Henry at four, Jordan Mason up there in the top five, JT at six, Alvin Kamara at seven, Gibbs at eight, James Conner at nine, Kyron at 10, Devon A. Chan at 11, James Cook at 12. Now, you're starting all these guys, of what? course. What does what does he have to do, Andrew? Alvin Kamara, yeah. I mean, he didn't score a touchdown this week, but he did yeah. have 29 touches. So Yeah, I I mean... The You're scared of the is, Atlanta defense. I get it. I would be, too. Well, and Atlanta's defense isn't awful, but... Our also, run defense... I, I genuinely... Our run defense is actually very good. It's, yeah, it's very good. Uh, and that being said, I, I think it was a reactionary... When I did these rankings, we had just got the news about Eric McCoy. Good call. I think they might be without... So I heard a podcast today, too. Sorry to cut you off, but... It was from a New Orleans beat reporter saying that when people see the injury report this week for New Orleans, they're going to be really surprised. I think their front, I think their offensive line outside of just Eric McCoy is going to be super banged up. So mm. keep an eye on that. Obviously, so, you didn't rank it accordingly to that, but I do think it could be a problem. Yeah, I mean, I did rank it to the Eric McCoy news, and that should be big for this offensive line. Like him being out for the next six to eight weeks is huge. He's a Massive, pro bowler. Sure. Yeah. So you know, I, I think that was a little bit more reactionary. In in reality, Kamara's probably for me closer towards like. Eight, maybe not yeah. eleven, but I, I'm not. He's not a top five guy for me. I mean, week. definitely, you know, you'd rather have him on the field than not. But I mean, to me, like, I'm probably gonna jinx somebody again, like Ramondre last week. But <laughs> I, I think Alvin Kamara's matchup proof. Yeah, I mean, I he's, just, so he's simply getting too much work. It doesn't yeah. matter like what part of the field that they're on or what down and distance it is. It's it's all Kamara there. So everyone's starting him. 2024 don't matter. It's literally the same Kamara. player. It's fucking insane. All right, Kamara. let's keep on moving down though. We have uh, one player I do want to talk about is Devon Achan. Have him at eleven. Adam, you're at 8. Andrew, you're at 12. Obviously, coming off of last week with Skylar Thompson under center, we do expect Snoop Huntley to be under center. Like, the Miami offense just looks terrible. They're playing against yep. Tennessee. Uh, good defensive front. Miami's offensive line blocking hasn't been great. I do wonder what their game plan is going to be. Like, obviously, you want the ball in A-Chan's hands as much as possible, but I think Raheem Mostert might be back this week. He should be back. Which, like, oh. I wonder I wonder if that means, like, A-Chan should not be in line for, like, a 20-touch game if they're just, like, we need to hide our quarterback as much as possible and give it to our running backs. But maybe that does mean more touches for HN. I'm also, I don't want to go over reactionary to HN's last week of, of a down week. It's like he's due any given play. Agreed. Yeah. I, I, I agree there, but I, I am tempering pretty much. You saw with the wide receiver rankings, like all expectations in Miami right now. Yeah. I'm just tempering those expectations. And I, I think obviously I still have him as a low end running back one, but I, I don't know, man. If I have to make the, the decision between HN with whoever it may be under center and. You know, James Cook. Give me James Cook, man. I James Cook, I feel like, to me, is like a top five play every week. I got him 10. He has him 13. But, yeah. Like, I, I, I think a chain. I was just going to say on his part first, is like, I, I think this Tennessee matchup uh, is much different than at Seattle. Um, I know that, like, that may be an unpopular opinion, but I think that Tennessee is a team that gifts the ball to the other team. And I think that Miami might have a much better day just be, just on that alone. Fair. The interior defensive line is legit as hell in Tennessee. Sure. They're really good. They are. But I thought that's where I think let's get HN the ball outside. Also, like uh, his two lower touches games this week, this year, 16 and 17 touches. So, like, yeah. Yeah. I think he's getting 20 touches if yeah. all things go the way that they expect to. That's why I feel like last case was actually worst case scenario for him. And it won't get anywhere. So, like, he needs to be into your lineup, obviously. James Cook at 12. Moving on to the second tier of 12 backs. We've got Aaron Jones at 13. B-Rob at 14. David Montgomery at 15. Josh Jacobs at... Okay, I actually, one thing I do want to talk about. David Montgomery versus Jameer Gibbs. Mm -hmm. So, we've got, like, a pretty significant gap here. 
Gibbs is up at eight. I tried to close mine a little bit here. I, I kind of feel like we're just like disrespecting Dave Montgomery a little bit here. I think Dave Montgomery is the better fantasy player up to this point. He is yeah, one, one stat I saw is uh, Jameer Gibbs is actually averaging just one reception more per game than David Montgomery is on the year. And obviously Montgomery is really? yeah one reception more per game. And Montgomery is Mon- obviously getting Mon- a lot more carries. Every single uh, target he's had to. Yeah, he has eight, and I think Gibbs has uh, 11. They actually have split the goal line work. Mm-hmm. They both have three carries inside the five-yard line. Uh, Seattle's defensive line, something to look out for. Yeah, They got, like, three players that are injured. I know Byron Murphy's hurt. Uh, a couple of the other guys on the interior. If that's the case, if, you know, just follow the practice reports throughout the week, if they're really banged up on their D-line, DeMont becomes, obviously, a must-start player. You're starting both running backs. I just kind of think, like, the gap shouldn't be as wide as it is. Fair. I, I also agree with the fact that they are banged up. And, and that being said, when you look at like how many points Seattle has given to running backs, it's not a lot, yeah. but that's not the same situation that you're going into this I, week. Right. I, I definitely get that point. I also feel like let's just, to me, last week was definitely an aberration. Gibbs got no, tu- no targets. He was six and seven the week prior. I, I think the upside still lies in Jameer Gibbs favor, but I do, I do think that, David Montgomery is not to be slept on. I'm at 15. I, I, you could make a case for him higher. I just, I think to me, the guys that I have in front of him are more clear to get like the entire team's offensive touches. Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean shit because Montgomery is getting 15 to 20 touches in this offense whilst playing 40, 50 percent of snaps. They have specific game plans for c- certain games, right? Where like they're playing against Arizona. Like, of course, you're gonna run it down their throat with Montgomery. The other thing is like, okay, their second game against Tampa Bay. They went super pass heavy for mm-hmm. like no reason. They thought that was the game plan, what they should have been doing. Obviously, it turned out to be the wrong game plan, and they probably should have continued to. like 55 times. Right, and like David Montgomery should have gotten a lot more carries. They were successful on the ground. So I guess my like point is if they ended up going run heavy in that Tampa Bay game and it worked, like we'd be looking at three really good games for DeMont, and like he feels like as consistent as they come for me, whereas Gibbs, like he's so explosive, and his uh, on a weekly basis, the upside is definitely there with him, but... I almost feel like they're both like RB1 right now. Yeah, I mean, you have to play both of these guys no matter what. Yeah, let's keep moving down, though. We got Jacobs at 16. ETN at 17 is someone that I want to talk about because this Jacksonville offense is fucking atrocious. I got him down at 20. Yeah, they're run blocking. Well, I was going to say, okay, like coming into the year, you got ETN and like Devin Singletary kind of back to back. You got Singletary going against the Dallas defense, which is just a gaping hole at this point. Yep. And you got ETN going against Houston in Houston. Like they can't get anything going on the ground. They can't get anything going anywhere, you know, in the air, whatever the case may be. So at this point, this is like, okay, start your studs over like the duds, but Singletary's looked really good. Uh, They're, they're getting the matchup against Dallas. I, I don't want to like overstate like the giants and be like, Oh, now they're this like good offense because their offensive line objectively is still pretty bad. Um, But I do think that's an interesting conversation. So how would you guys look at a sit start decision between like ETN and Devin Singletary? So I've, I've actually been targeting for my start sits of the week on my channel. I've been targeting Dallas's run defense because they have been giving up a lot of points and it's worked out well so far. But one thing you got to keep in mind too, is they played Alvin Kamara. They played Derrick Henry. They played some really good running backs. Devin Singletary is not Alvin Kamara. He is not, De- uh, Derrick Henry. Sure. <laughs> Adam, he is not those guys. <laughs> that being <laughs> said, uh, I think he's still a guy that you can target this week. I still like the matchup. I still like the the volume that he's getting, but I still would rather start my stud in Travis Etienne. And even though, you know, the offense hasn't looked good the last couple of weeks, even last week, like, I don't even know what we can take away from that other than they got blown the hell out. Yeah. Uh, he still finished as a running back, too. Obviously, you didn't draft him to be a running back, too, but... But that's what he is. That is that is what he is, and I, I have him here at 16. That's in the running back two range. Uh, I think he's probably going to have... Where is he at on the year? So, get this. I'm going to... I'm gonna. So, like, his finishes on the week so far. He was 28 week one, 21 last week, 21 the week after let, that. Let me help paint yeah. the picture, too, though. Travis Etienne has a touchdown in week one and week two to get to running back two and running back three territory. Right. Like, I just... That's I, concerning. He didn't, I, he didn't last week, and he still was the same, though. But... My, I guess this week against He hasn't Buffalo. cracked top 20 yet, though. He was like a top 10 drafted. He's seeding back. work to tank Bigsby. He's not the old, like, uh, get every single touch in the backfield. Bigsby didn't really yeah, he get got, involved. like, one or two carries. Um, well, still, then, he's getting just – he's not getting the work that he used to get, uh, at least last year Yeah, uh, for this point. That's for sure. Their offense is not good enough to, like, give a running back 20 touches. They have that's to a throw problem. the football now, too much. The, the other thing I'll say is that, like – all right, well, I have – actually, this conversation is interesting because I have him at 19 and 20, and I right. put Singletary ahead of, of ETN. 
Like I real, think realistically, it's the right play. Realistically, what I think is, I'm too much of a pussy to actually do it. There you go. That's well, all right. Put sometimes you got to say it and, and just admit it. Like it's okay <laughs> to admit it. You know. Are you starting Singletary over Etn? If yes, you actually have, I, I'm. I have been on record kind of fading Etn for a while. I think that there's a lot of name cachet for no reason. Per, personally, like I, I mean, don't for see, no reason feels a little crazy. Why? That sounds like hate. <laughs> How does it feel like crazy? All right, you said well because he's had I, multiple I with, bad, good years in a row. But yeah. no, I'm saying right now with this offense and what he's doing, yeah. there's I don't care about that old stuff. Like, and I think I was with you a little bit until you said like I'm gonna start my studs because Etienne's not a stud for me at all that's, anymore. That's fair. Point blank, period. I just, I mean, I don't know if Singletary's a stud either. Though. But that's no, but, who I'm we saying, were but I'm saying, you, right? But you're saying like I'm gonna just start my studs. Like to me, the, we can stop with the Etienne conversation there until he proves me significantly otherwise of what we've seen so far in this year. I, I, I'm worried about Jacksonville's offense, especially in the run game. I think they're going to be behind possibly still, so you're going to be looking at, you know, I think Kirk and Brian Thomas, you got to fire up in your flex spots, but I'm worried about the run game. Terribly. What are the odds that Doug Peterson is the first head coach fired? Uh, I think they'll let him play out the year. I think so? Yeah. They look I think he should be gone for sure. They need a shakeup. Like, there's yeah. nothing. It's so stale out there I'm in worried Jacksonville. about T-Law, man. Are you worried about T-Law? A little bit, yeah. I think, he, I think he just is what he is, dude. Like, I I wouldn't be worried at this point. I just, he has great highlight plays, which is so many of these quarterbacks. Everyone's like, oh, he's got the potential because they watch a throw. But I'm like, yeah, but consistency and longevity matters just as much as, like, one play aren't talented. I agree. Plays. And I think, for me, like, there's not too much for me to be worried about I don't feel like because at the end of the day like I'm not worried that Trevor Lawrence isn't capable of playing quarterback at the NFL level like where we were you know people are worried about Bryce Young like Bryce Young hadn't shown he was capable of playing at the NFL level Trevor Lawrence has shown that he's won playoff games like yeah I think we're okay with Trevor Lawrence he's just for fantasy purposes he's a guy that's QB2 well I mean I think both fantasy and NFL level I mean I think what we saw from Trevor Lawrence the big step he made after the year with Urban was sizable and I think right now like it it feels like we have seen that be his peak and we're not near that anymore so I think it's uh for for me I I think he can recapture it I guess my my whole thing is like he is what he is in the sense that his peak is just not that peak there you go he's not the next Peyton Manning like they said he was yeah no he definitely you could you could I think the trajectory though in year two and even a little bit in year three before the injury was like all right this guy could end up being an elite level. player, and he just does not seem to be getting there. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, an actual elite player, Zach um, Moss, the next guy up on this list. He's our running back 18. Right. Adam, you've got him up at 16, playing against Carolina. And you got him down at 21, which I definitely lean more towards you. I think Zach Moss is a fantastic play this week. He put up, I think, like 20 PPR points last week in a really good matchup against Washington. Cody. Like, even better matchup against Carolina. I know Carolina looked good last week, but that does not fix their defense. That does not fix... You know, the fact that they don't have Derek Brown anymore. Uh, Zach Moss is playing 75% of the snaps on the year. Chase Brown has looked relatively good, explosive in his, like, few carries. But even last week, we just saw a season high in routes run for Zach Moss. He ran 71% of the running back routes. It's going down for Chase Brown despite it. I just think they trust him more. Like, they look at Zach Moss, they're like, we know you're going to pass block. We know you're not going to fuck up run plays. Like, he's going to continue getting a lot of work. It's not explosive work, but I do think as the Cincinnati offense gets better and better, and as they come into, like, their form, it benefits Zach Moss. So I think he's a yeah. really rock-solid RB2. I, I like Zach Moss, too. I still have him as a RB2 in my rankings. Um, that's kind of the way that I'm viewing him. And I, I view him and Devin Singletary kind of in the same aspect this week. Uh, it just came to me when I'm sitting there asking myself, like, would I rather start this guy or would I rather start that guy? Like, Tony Pollard, I leaned him over Moss. I leaned uh, Singletary over Moss. Like, Stevenson over Moss. That's just kind of how it shook out. And it's not anything negative about Zach Moss. He actually Stevenson over Moss? Yeah. I don't like that. And, and it's just kind of the way that it shook out. It's not necessarily anything against Zach Moss's play. He showed a lot of good things last week. And this defense here against Carolina is going to be pretty soft. So uh, he should continue to build upon it. But just like I said, as it came to those start set decisions or, or who would I rather have, he just kind of found his way down to 21. All right, Dan. I feel like it's a good uh, – it's a it's – a, Really needed get right matchup, and I think this is a team that's got their backs against the walls. I I, I could see Moss end up the whole offense just kind of eating against. People Carolina are like well. really in on Carolina. That game opened at it was either six and a half or seven points. It's down to like four 
four and a half for Cincinnati. They want the I Andy Dalton revenge game. So fucking bad. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be revenge for sure. I mean, there's never been more of a get right spot for Cincinnati. Although, I mean, their defense is bad enough that I'm not even sure they're a good team. If they lose, if they go zero and four and lose at Carolina to the Red Rifle, uh, Mr. September, it's going to be it's, how yeah, panicked, scary hours. How panicked would you be? Like. I mean, I don't know how much ten level panic. I mean, it's already it should already be at zero three, pretty close to ten for Cincinnati. Like if like as a football team, yeah. If you go, yeah, you're zero four, of course. I feel like at zero and three, there's there's not much to get. Like it would be more panic, but by how much it's already should be crazy panic. I mean, the problem too in that is like you have Pittsburgh, who's three zero. Even if you don't believe they're a better team, that's they are a better. That's way too big of a gap to just like make up in a twelve week span. You have Baltimore's a really good team who will end up winning their you know ten games, whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a huge problem. They, they're they a little bit like a better version of Jacksonville where it's like I don't think that any of the pieces are that bad, but they're just stale. They probably yeah. just need something new. They need something different. They need like an injection Is of energy. Is Taylor going to be on the hot seat, you think? I think he should be. Like, I think it's hard to get rid of him because he's had, like, success, but the I just Super don't Bowl think... Run. Since don't, he doesn't do it either. They literally just hold on to coaches for forever. That's what I mean. Like, it just feels stale there. Like, they need... It, it feels like they succeed despite him. Yeah. He doesn't, like, elevate anyone's game. Like, it might be opinion. a poorly Crazy run stat. organization. Every 0-3 team this year has some type of relation to Zach Taylor. Wow. I don't know where you fooled that, but that seems insane. Tennessee, Brian Callahan, yeah. Tennessee has uh, Brian Callahan... Sure. And then, uh, who's the other 0-3 team? I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, Jags. They have a Taylor brother. Mm. Damn. Okay. So what about, all the Taylors are 0-3 or his friends. <laughs> what about here? The uh, opposite of the coaching tree. Crazy. What Don't about, hire those guys. What about J.K.? So th- this, mm. I'm just curious here. The Chargers, J.K. was the hot you know, commodity all after week one and two. This Chargers offense got completely erased in the second half of this game. Well, here's there's kind of two takeaways, I think, from that. One, J.K. Dobbins, you were playing some of the lightest defenses it looked like in the first two weeks. So you saw your first real test against Pittsburgh. You got another good test here against Kansas City. And also, in last week's game, you don't finish the day with your starting quarterback. So that there, Yeah, there's three big, like, I would put Herbert likely on the wrong side of 50-50 for this game. So? Yeah, I've, I've heard rumblings both ways. Most most of like the Twitter doctors though that I've watched content from think he'll likely sit because they have their bye the next week. So it's like, oh, you get him, the extra week. Let him get healthy. Uh, Slater very likely out for this game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Joe Alt possibly. Joe I, I mean, out. definitely not ruled out. Joe Alt yeah, not the no. lead. It's not out ruled out yet. Really? Yeah, I would I would wait on that. Okay. Yeah. He's not out, but he's definitely banged up. There's a possibility that he that both of their All Pro fucking left tackle or tackles are gonna be out for this game, which is you're without your quarterback, Scary. you're without both tackles. Like, yeah, I, I don't know what J.K. Dobbins. Can I'm actually do. if, if Taylor the, Heineke sees him, baby. Stop. I don't think that. Uh, really I don't. Stop. I think Alt <laughs> might actually suit up, but like if, if they're down both tackles and Herbert doesn't suit up, I'm moving Dobbins down. To be completely honest. With yeah, you. I think you have to. Yeah, to what like 57. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> I think I think he's still okay. I, well, they've completely phased Gus Edwards out of the offense. Yeah, finally. Well, he phased himself out, to be honest. Yeah, he no, he earned that for sure. Yeah. Do we think? Do we? Is there any uh, credence to like maybe Kamani Vidal maybe. starts to get some options, some some shots here? Is that too big brain? Yeah, it's too don't, big brain. Too big brain. Don't, don't, don't too don't, big brain until he gets eight carries this week. Then it was a great fucking don't call. Don't give right? them life. Already. And then we're all going to go crazy for Vidal on the waiver wire. Right. So sneaky pickup, JMO. Don't put a bit in, but. Uh, come on, even dollar. Just stash him. A zero week, dollar fat. Be a week early. <laughs> yeah, be a week early. I, well, here's the thing: like they can't just rely on J.K. They know about his injury history, right? Like, you can't just give him 25 carries a game and expect him to hold up. If they're going to completely phase Gus out, maybe there's something there. Maybe I'm the sharpest you motherfucker to so. ever do it. <laughs> I hope so. I need it. I need <laughs> it so bad. It. Anyways, yeah, J.K. will not be a good start if all those guys miss. Yeah. As we continue down the rankings, we've got Chuba right behind him at 24. Uh, Jerome Ford at 25, Rashad White at 26, Steele at 27, Charbonnet's at 28. Uh, I mean, this is probably just as simple as, like, if Kenneth Walker plays, you're playing Kenneth Walker. If he doesn't, Zach Charbonnet shoots all the way up the rankings. Zach Charbonnet goes up quite a bit. I, I It sounds the like Detroit, to me— The Detroit matchup's really tough, it's though. Tough. Yeah, it is. But I, I feel like uh, just when you look at the landscape, to me, there's not that many guys that are going to be the clear— all the touches, and that's what Sharps. Okay, would be. so so I put him at twenty six because I was pushing him down my rankings due to the uncertainty of him mm-hmm. being the starter. Yeah, it looks like you did it even more for me. But if he plays, well, he's going to play as the starter. Yeah, I got you. Okay, where are we throwing him in? I, for me, I'd probably put him in the same conversation as the Singletary, Pollard, Stevenson range. I'd I mean, be above that, I think. Yeah, I think I'd put him like even with the matchup, you're putting him above that. Yeah, I think I'm getting so much work. I though. think I'll put him at the Moss range, like sixteen. 
I think that's about, I think I put him like maybe right above that. Like if I had Charbonnet and Zach Moss and Kenneth Walker, him playing, or Monty? that that's where the conversation which starts is where I put him at sixteen. Right? Yeah, I would Monty. put him probably right. Yeah, right above Etn Zach Moss, like in that tier for sure. I'll play him over Jacobs. Um, I would not do that. I, I might do that. Why? Why, do that. why is everyone so high on Jacobs, or why? Why do you say that? Uh, well, he's had a lot of volume, a ton of volume, and I feel like. Minnesota run D, how you down? Minnesota run D looks good, mm-hmm. uh, but we haven't had Jacobs with, what's his name, Jordan Love. Yeah, we did. Utah State. We did. Yeah, week one on the Brazilian uh, swimming pool. Yeah. Dub. But I think uh, Josh Jacobs, he still has a lot more ceiling than people probably recognize. Yeah, he's he's a good R- RB2. Um, I will say, I think you guys are a little low on Chuba after last week. I, I was actually going to talk about it. I, you think? I think there's a case to be made. I put him up higher. I just, I have a hard time. It, not ignoring the fact that it could just go back to, like, yeah. I don't think it's guaranteed to be fixed from last week. We saw upside, but I don't know that it's guaranteed to stay there. I, agreed. I just, I, I think that, like, the matchup is really good. Um, I just traded for him in Dynasty. You did? Yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's kind of sharp. Would you give up, like, a third? Third and two fourths. Okay. I, yeah. yeah. That, that I think is good. It's a nice, like, probably five, six week plug in for RB2. Yeah. I think I the matchup is really go good. down and I needed, like, an RB2. Sure. Yeah. I, th- I think the matchup's really good. I think what we saw was really in- encouraging last week. He was really involved in the passing game, and without him feeling out, like the short yardage game, maybe you know leans a little bit towards the running oh, back. Sanders show. is such a cone. He's, he's yeah, he's a definition for sure. It's crazy. Yeah. So Chuba went back to like workhorse, and I think the matchup is good enough where I would start him over Dobbins if those injuries are there. Najee is so uninspiring. Like those those types of guys. I wanted to put Rashad White further down my ranks, to be honest with you. Yeah. Me too. He but feels I he feels like he's be. about to give this job up to Bucky. Yeah. I, I the numbers don't really say that yet. I know. I, it's like the the worst kept secret right now that like Bucky. Your, your, your Kamani Vidal take, I feel like Bucky Irving with Steen though. Like it, it's got to be. It's got more. I mean, it's like literally everyone's opinion. Like I haven't heard a podcast go by about running backs that aren't like Bucky should be starting over Rashad White. Like it's it, everyone's saying yeah, the same nobody thing. Nobody is team Rashad White. No one's team Rashad White. There's even though the numbers. Defend. Yeah. Like he's been terrible, but like the Bucks don't seem like they're going to sit him anytime soon. Fair. The one thing that scares me a little bit, and the reason why Irving. Obviously, everything scares me about Rashad White. I was selling him pretty much everywhere I could sell him. I only have one left. But Bucky moved up my rankings just because Bulls is already saying Bucky's earned more touches. Yeah, I think there's credence to that. Like, I, I would be very weary about starting Rashad White this week. Uh, we got Carson Steele at 27, Zach Charbonnet at 28. Let's talk about Cam Akers a little bit. Got him down here at 29. We don't know what Joe Mixon or Damian Pierce's status is. Mm-hmm. If I had to guess, to be honest, I kind of think— I think Mixon sits. I think they both might sit again. I think Akers starting this week. I think it's going to be the Acres show yeah. again. But until, I'm not going to move him up until we know. Yeah, I think, because I, I, I think Mixon's dealing with a high ankle sprain. Like, I think that's actually what it is. And I love how they I love how they, they tried to really downplay that, too. They did. You got to watch, I told Andrew, dude. I'm like, I would not well, He be, came back in the game, dude. Sure, but you could, anyone could do that at yeah, any but time. The, the Cooper Cup came the back. The adrenaline, the like, sometimes will get you go back and out there but you're not right dude you've got to follow like some of my favorite resources out there like dr jesse morris and dr chow like the pro football doc on injury experts on youtube they will watch the video and these are dudes who have worked with professional athletes for a very long time and they don't give you fake bias takes of like what the team wants you to say they both were like joe mixon suffered a high ankle sprain yeah that to me tells me like okay he's not back the following week I told you another one that I like, and you said you've seen his stuff too, is the sports MD analysis. Deepak, yeah, yeah. Deepak, yeah. He I like, tend to go with like the sports orthopedics ones that do the surgery and the ones that are like, not like PT, nothing against them. I like getting their opinion as well. But in my experience, like being in the industry and working with the doctors, those guys are so accurate yeah. with the way that but they're Deepak looking at stuff. Deepak said when it happened, he was like, this is two to three weeks. Yeah. Like right away, two to three weeks. So that being said, Akers, I, th- I think Akers is like not that good of a running back. I think his vision problems are real like I don't think he can find holes that well he's athletic enough to make shit happen he got into the end zone last week on a catch he's boom bust he is very boom bust uh but he's going to take the majority of the work and Jacksonville is obviously a much easier task than the Minnesota run defense he goes if he's the starter with no Pierce no yeah where do you put him I put him in the Dobbins area like Najee Dobbins that's kind of where I throw him in yeah yeah I, th- I think I agree with that I, I I that's where I would probably have him and I'll be honest though like I think the matchup last week and this week are very different in the whole offense didn't really do – the whole offense looked uninspiring, frankly. Minnesota yeah. has Strauss seeing ghosts. I, I think that actually if you are – if there's a, a spot to play K-Makers, it's definitely this week if he's actually the only back in town again. 
Yeah, potentially. All right, so Akers at 29. We'll move up if the other guys get ruled out. We've got Javante at 30, DeAndre Swift at 31, Bucky at 32, Braylon at 33, Rico at 34, Tajay at 35, Zamir White at 36. And we can go down the rest of it. Zeke, Austin Eckler, Ty Chandler, Alexander Madison, Roshan Johnson. Is there anyone like that we are – really looking at is like a an upside play in the offense like I think Rico is kind of taking over the backfield from Zeke in terms of snaps and routes and all that stuff very uninspiring like Bucky and Braylon are both really good on their own do they get enough standalone value to get into your lineup like I think Eckler definitely needs to be higher up in your uh, in your rankings Adam I, I well I saw he he's probably not gonna play he's not he gonna hurt play. Okay. Yeah, okay he's he didn't fly after the game because of the concussion oh right he got that okay yeah. I fell asleep a second so <laughs> yeah. so I have him at 32 and I'm, I, I'm doing the rankings this year I moved him uh, low you're right, you're right you always just slap me when I no it's okay like that. I, I moved I him lower you checking me. Because I felt like he wasn't going to play, but like even thirty two, I would move him up if he did play. Agree, he's been sneaky kind of good. Believe yeah. me, he he also like somehow he freaking beat me in one of my matchups, like the worst top type thing. You're like he has to overdo his his uh like like prediction. No, he, that's not happening. Yeah, and then he scores. You're like, come on, man, dude. Well, he keeps scoring. He's so involved in the pass game. This defense is so bad that they need to pass a lot. And like mm-hmm. Jane Daniels is a check down king right now, dude. You know what else is kind of crazy? <laughs> Eckler's their returner. And that kickoff was crazy. In week one, he returned one for a touchdown that got called back. And then the next week, like he om- or last week, he almost returned another one. He he's gonna bring one or two back the rest of the year, yeah. probably. He's Dude, gonna put that in your lineup. I saw I don't I don't wanna poo poo on Jaden Daniels, but I saw his passing chart and a lot of people are super impressed with the passing chart because it's like there's really no incompletions on it and stuff. But when you look at the the places he's throwing the football, sure. it's all to the right side of the field within like 15 yards. It's like it's a, co- it's, like a it's a college offense. It yeah. is so it's Cincinnati defense, bro. Like, that Dumb. cures all. Dumb. And then there was like two passes long, and that was it. They were both to McLaurin. Just cause, just because you know what's coming doesn't mean you can stop it. Fair, but it, it just it looked insane to I, see I, that. I, type I don't of disagree, but it's working somehow. For well, now, we'll see. So, is there anyone from like thirty down to forty that you guys are remotely interested in getting into your lineups? Honestly, like he, here's this is the point where I think I play Madison. Really? Yeah, I've swapped him in, I, I, in I, my I, rankings completely. I, I thought about doing that too. I just feel like it would not shock me to see what we did in week two, where they just flip flop. I don't. I don't have enough. In, I don't have enough confidence to start either one of these guys. Frankly, personally, are you starting either Dallas running back because you actually have Zeke above Rico? You have Rico above Zeke. I think if you follow the snaps and stuff, it says that. Zeke's a cone. Zeke's for sure a cone, but, like, he's also Rico eating the Giants up in historically. Not that that really matters Zeke's right now. but droppable in leagues almost. I, I think so. Yeah, he, he could be. I, I could see, though, like, this Giants team is really not that good in my personal opinion, even though they just beat Cleveland. I could yeah. see if there's a week to put Zeke in there maybe this I'll, week. I'll tell you what. Just looking at any of these guys, basically 32 down, like, I'll just go through as quickly as I can. Irving, Allen, Rico – even Spears, I'm okay throwing those guys in your flex as a pinch if you need them. I feel like I would throw any top 50 wide receiver in my lineup. I, I was just going to say, though, those guys. once you get past, like, honestly, once you get to Javante here, for me personally, like, I'm, I'm having a lot of conversations over at that wide receiver, like, swapping into my flex. And the only I, time I'm really here is if I my running back, too, is dookie, and I have to play someone. Yeah. All right, you summed it up. Yep. All right, you want to get play? into deep cuts? Yeah. Who you got? Uh, I'll just go, yeah, let me go... I had Roshan Johnson, who was the 42. He ends up that making was on the list of 41. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I really have that much confidence in him, like, getting the work. This is one of those, like, Denver backfields where it's like, okay, this, the signs are pointing this way, and then all of a sudden the fucking, no, they're not. you know, yeah, the compass goes the other direction the next week. But Roshan did jump over Khalil Herbert. DeAndre Swift has been arguably, like, we want to talk about Rashad White being bad. DeAndre Swift has been, like, another level of bad as, as it relates to efficiency. They got a great matchup against the Rams, so I think if they want to, you know, hand the baton over to another back. It looks like it's pointing towards Roshan. I think he's maybe the best pass catcher now in that backfield, which I, I don't know if that's true because Swift is pretty good, but, like, they don't want to use him in that I role. I hate so. DeAndre Swift. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to start really anyone, but I, I do think there's a chance that Roshan has some upside if he overtakes the backfield this yeah. week. Uh, my deep cut is Emmanuel Wilstein. Surprising to see him get 14 touches last yeah. week. Uh, I'm not going to act like he's a smash play. If you're in the deep cut running back, this means you're running back who's pretty weak. You're, you're desperate. If you're in this desperate range, I mean, it's hard to really argue that there's a lot of better running backs in uh, the shit territory than Emmanuel Wilson. I, I think the thing is, though, Minnesota right now, we'll see if they have a down week. They, they, this team is just playing lights out football yeah, right now. You it's love crazy. To see it. Emmanuel Wilson I'm is trying to like, speak it into existence, the yeah. down week, you know? <laughs> He's kind of like what we wanted Marshawn Lloyd to, to be. Myself. No, I mean, that's the thing. Like he Because Lloyd's out, exactly. A.J. Dillon's out, and he, he's like – 
showing a level of explosiveness that we thought we were going to get from Marshawn Lloyd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, my deep cut, I'm going to go with Justice Hill, the Baltimore Ravens. What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? How does a 46 <laughs> and a half point over under sound uh, in a game that's supposed to be pretty high scoring? Look, it's it's gross. You never want to throw a guy like this into your lineup, but at the end of the Agreed. day, he's getting enough work on the ground in the air where I feel like you can plug him in and get a safe, you know, eight, nine, ten points and be okay with it. So Justice Hill, deep cut running back. If you need him, hopefully you don't. The king might go crazy. King might hopefully not go. Who are you playing against? Uh, I'm playing against Gutterstein. This is an absolute must win victory. Every week's a fucking must win. It is, but there's also like levels to this shit. Nah, fact, 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 like this fact. is gut. You know I love you, but this is nah. We ain't playing. All right. Well, if you want to go play an underdog, download the app. Use code BDGE. We'll get you a deposit bonus up to a thousand bucks. We'll get you that Patrick Mahomes half a passing yard free square, and we'll get you access to all of our weekly rankings for the remainder of the season just by depositing ten dollars with our code. Those are the running back rankings for week four. We've got the wide receiver rankings already live on the channel. So we will see y'all tomorrow with a redrafting the first two rounds of a fantasy football draft, knowing what we know. Now, should be a good one. So subscribe if you are new to the channel, and we'll see y'all when we see you. Smoochies.